Hey, it's Scott Horner, Cruise Consulting, and today we're talking about at what revenue level should your venture capital backed startup start worrying about sales tax? This is a very common question, and luckily we have an amazing tax team at Cruise Consulting that can answer these for us. Um, and so the revenue level is just one of the inputs into whether you have to start filing sales tax in a given state. But let's answer the question right away. So typically it's around $100,000 in sales annually in a given state, but that number does change. In some states, it's $500,000, some states $250,000. The bigger states, you know, tend to be like 500K. The littler states, A, they probably have a lower threshold because they want to be able to get, uh, pick up some sales tax revenue um, and it's worth it for them. Uh, but you know, 100K is when I start telling startups that they're in the, the danger zone and they should actually do what's called the sales tax nexus study with the cruise team uh, to figure out where they have exposure, where they need to start filing sales tax. Uh, but there's also a couple, other, a couple other inputs that go into this. So um, let's take a second to cover those. The first one is um, another component can actually be a factor, which is transactions. And most of the time, if a state actually considers transactions, some states just completely exclude it and don't really care. They just go by just the revenue or sales in a given state. If transactions apply, usually that's about 200 transactions, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem like a lot. Now, some states, again, this is a sales tax is a state thing. So some states are uh, revenue and transactions. So you must have done hypothetically $100,000 of revenue and 200,000, 200 transactions. But there's about half the states which are or on that. And so they are, you know, 100K in revenue, 250K in revenue, 500K in revenue, whatever it is, or 200 transactions. And so those are interesting because oftentimes, um, a client is working or working selling in a state and they're like, Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, they have a small price point, like a low price point. And so they don't think they're tripping anything on the sales tax side, but in fact, they've exceeded that 200 transactions threshold and should be filing. So remember it's not just revenue, but it's actual transaction volume in a given state. Now there's a couple other things we should go over here, um, which are, um, you know, if you are a startup running a marketplace business, you actually really care whether states on the sales tax exclude or include marketplace sales. And the reason for that is you could imagine if you, if it mar marketplace sales are included, which is much less, most states exclude it, but a few do include it. You're really only getting, you know, if you're a marketplace, you're only usually getting like five or 10% of the value out of a sale. So say someone buys a hundred, you know, a uh, hundred dollar item on your marketplace, you might charge like a five or 10% fee to facilitate that transaction. Well, if you're responsible for the sales tax on that, it could actually eat up your, your profit margin pretty quickly. So that's also something you really want to investigate. And again, have a tax professional CPA, uh, do a sales tax nexus study to help you determine that. Uh, one other thing to talk about is whether SaaS is taxable, software as a service, super popular business model for venture capital backed startups nowadays. Um, and guess what? There are a lot of states that do tax SaaS. Now, the interesting thing has been, it started, I think a couple years ago, it was like 13 states and 19 states, and it's getting into the 20s now. So more and more states are looking to fill those revenue gaps that pretty much every municipality, state, even the federal government has revenue gaps. So they are opportunistically looking at different uh, uh, types of transactions of tax and SaaS is becoming one pretty quickly. So odds are, especially like if you're in the bigger states, um, like New York, Texas, those are SaaS companies, SaaS sales are taxed in the state. Uh, California, Florida, two other very large states, not taxing them, not taxing SaaS transactions yet. So, so you can see it's a little bit of like a 50, 50 thing. Uh, but if you're a SaaS company, um, and hitting revenue and a material amount of revenue, then it actually is important for you to get a sales tax nexus study as well. So hope this helps. It's, you know, again, 
sales tax is done on a, on a state by state basis. So the rules are different all across the board. Luckily, there are, you know, some guidelines like we just talked about to help you guide through this, but there's really no substitute talking to your CPA about it. And uh, don't forget your friendly CPA, Cruise Consulting, we're there for you if you have these kind of questions. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Thank you.